This is Dr. Hessel finishing uh, the podcast of my uh, session on uh, blood pressure monitoring part one. Where I left off was about uh, how to recognize ringing. And I stated that uh, one method is checking the return of flow pressure. And uh, if the arterial systolic pressure uh, from the arterial line is more than 10 to 20 millimeters above the return of flow pressure, you should suspect uh, ringing. So what uh, do we do about ringing? Well, you can attempt to improve the uh, natural frequency of the transducer system by eliminating any micro air and uh, shortening uh, the, the tubing and getting rid of stopcocks. You could artificially increase damping by adding a section of compliant tubing or a micro bubble. Uh, in the past, there were devices that would do this, but these are no longer available. Or you can work around it by using the arterial line mean pressure, which is unaffected by ringing, by using the return of flow pressure to measure systolic pressure, or simply using the cuff to measure systolic pressure. This is a picture of a device that was available in the past uh, to um, uh, artificially add uh, dampening and get rid of ringing. Uh, this is no longer available. The second uh, problem uh, with the uh, transducer systems is the phenomenon of damping. Um, damping refers to how long the system oscillates. In uh, the perfectly damp system, uh, the output signal would be identical to the input signal. In an underdamp system, uh, the output signal has uh, these uh, ringing with exaggerated spikes. And in the overdamp system, uh, the uh, arterial waveform is uh, blunted. Uh, the amount of damping is expressed as a damping coefficient, which goes from zero to one. Uh, when there is a complete uh, damping, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, no r resonance, um, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, there's also no phasic response. Um, conversely, if it's less than uh, uh, 0.3, uh, there's a prolonged resonance, and uh, it's underdamped. Uh, no uh, degree of damping is perfect. And it's always a balance between too damped and inadequately damped. And empirically, it's been found that a damping coefficient of somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7 is ideal. These are the factors that influence damping. And basically, uh, the damping coefficient is proportional to uh, viscosity, length, and density over diameter stiffness and density. Um, if the system is under damped and you have a low beta, uh, or the things that will cause the system to be under damped is a thin fluid, short tubing, wide tubing, stiff tubing, and uh, <clears throat> factors that would cause it to be excessively damped would be viscous fluid, long narrow tubing, and soft tubing. If the system is under damped, you get ringing. And if it's over damped, you get a poor frequency response. Uh, with uh, systolic pressure falsely low, diastolic pressure falsely high. But again, mean arterial pressure should be unchanged. And this is an illustration of a properly damped system and an over damped system. 
this is uh, another patient uh, demonstrating an overdamp system where the normal, the true systolic pressure is up here, but and the true diastolic pressure is down here, uh, but the actual uh, systolic is lower, and the actual or the the uh, displayed systolic is lower than true, and the diastolic is higher than true, uh, but again the mean is is about the same. Um, I've already mentioned some of the things that can cause an overdamp system. Um, air bubbles, uh, loose connections, partial occlusion, kinks, clots, tip of the catheter against the wall, and compression of the vessel. Uh, this uh, is taken from the latest edition of, of Barish and shows that uh, um, uh, the range of uh, optimal damping, which is influenced by uh, the natural frequency. Uh, <clears throat> if the system uh, is, uh, if the damping coefficient is too low, you get an underdamped system. If it's too high, you get an overdamped system. And this triangle uh, identifies the uh, proper uh, damping coefficient for various uh, natural uh, frequencies. Uh, the dynamic function of a transducer can be assessed. Uh, and this is discussed in uh, Miller's uh, textbook. But basically, while recording the arterial trace, uh, you uh, insert an abrupt pressure change into the system by pulling and then releasing the flush valve. Um, this results in a uh, bouncing a trace, and from this you can determine both the natural frequency and the damping coefficient. Uh, this is an illustration of the tracing. Uh, here we have uh, pulled the uh, flush device, and here we let it go. When you let it go, you see this bouncing trace. And from the interval between these cycles, you can calculate the frequency. And from the uh, reduction from uh, spike to spike, uh, you can determine the uh, damping coefficient. Taking the ratio of the second spike to the first spike gives you the damping coefficient. You determine the natural frequency from this formula and determine the damping coefficient, as I described, measuring the ratio of the, first, the second cycle to the first cycle, and then read it off of the curve. Um, this is a curve which relates the damping coefficient to the uh, damping uh, ratio. This uh, finally illustrates the effect of uh, raising the damping coefficient on ringing when the natural frequency is 10 hertz. Uh, when the uh, damping coefficient is 0.2, you have marked ringing. And as you increase the damping coefficient, you see that the amount of ringing uh, decreases. Conversely, this shows the effect of raising the natural frequency when the damping coefficient is constant. Uh, here, uh, with a, both of these have a damping coefficient of 0.1. Uh, when the natural frequency is 10, you see marked uh, uh, ringing. And when you raise the natural frequency to 20, uh, you notice a reduction in the amount of ringing. Um, uh, this shows the effect of uh, bubbles. Uh, this is uh, ideal uh, tracing uh, with uh, a natural frequency of 17 and a damping coefficient of 0.2. Adding a tiny bubble uh, results in an underdamped system uh, which uh, lowers the uh, natural uh, frequency and uh, uh, results in a false uh, elevation of the systolic pressure. On the other hand, if you put a large uh, bubble in the system, it results in an overdamp system and a false decline in the systolic pressure. On the rest of these slides, I have the study questions.